So hello, everybody. I have with me um, one of my longtime clients who I've worked with for for since 2010, Josh. Josh, would you please introduce yourself, um, who you are, what you do, and how we even became involved as, as um, you know, as, as colleagues and as clients. Yeah, so my name is Josh Rogan Buck. I work, to work at Walters Gardens in Zeeland, Michigan, and I'm a, a regional product manager. I oversee sales of little liner perennial plants that are sold all over North America, but I oversee sales in the Midwest. When I met Joyce, I was, I owned my own garden center and I was the president of the Chamber of Commerce in Bad Axe, Michigan, where I grew up, and looking for programming and to have a really good, powerful speaker for a, for a luncheon that we were having with our membership. And, and Joyce was just the right one to have for that. Thank you. Yeah, and that, and that started, oh my God, that's 10 years ago. <laughs> and when people watch this, who knows, maybe it's even gonna be, it'll be uh, you know, 2030. So tell me, Josh, of um, when you came, uh, just so everybody knows, you were in my beta class, and that was uh, just the first time I ever did kick conflict to the curb. Since then, you see, I have a new, new poster back there. And Josh was one of the, um, I would say, 18 to 20 um, participants that, that attended. And what conflict, because since we talked about conflict, and we're going to get into you know, the things that um, you got from the class. But give me a conflict that, um, that, that you're going through right now that you're even thinking of some of the strategies that you learned. Yeah, I actually have a customer who, who for whatever reason, sounds really simple, but my company only allows customers to come and physically pick up their plants Wednesday through Friday. And uh, for whatever reason, this customer felt that he had to have his plants yesterday, Monday, and we couldn't, it just isn't possible. Plants are not ready, and we're a huge company, and there's there's probably 27 steps to get a tray of plants up to the front of our building for a customer to pick it up, and, and this customer knows that, but, um, but during the class, we talked about uh, get what you tolerate, right? This is local enough that he figures we're one of him and and he we've probably made enough exceptions to our rules and our procedures in the past that he just has come to ex expect it and well if you don't do this for me then then i'm taking my business elsewhere and i'm going to do my best to write an eloquent letter to say okay <laughs> okay so you're going to see what i'm doing right now is i'm giving you a standing ovation because that is hard. What you just said that you're that you're doing. So you're breaking up with a, a longtime client, and it's hard, but you're doing it. And I find that many of my clients say it's hard and they don't do it. So what besides you get what you tolerate, which is definitely one of my favorite expressions, do you remember any other expression or um, technique that uh, spoke to you during the class? Yeah, another another PowerPoint slide on your presentation and that we discussed quite a bit was uh, the two wolves in a fight, the the evil one and the benevolent one, and and which one wins the fight, the one you feed, and and I've used that a little bit at work, but I also use it as you know as a father and as a husband, and and I'm, I'm probably a an evil wolf all too often, I feed the evil one all too often, but I. It's nice to have a reminder to feed the benevolent one and 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 do my best to be uh, to look at things from their point of view and and also you know consider as many factors as I can um, and you know maybe maybe it's still a matter of breaking up with a customer but mm -hmm. if I feed that benevolent wolf first um, you know then then when it comes to a situation like the one I'm in with this customer then. You know, I think everybody would be able to understand the position that I'm going to take. Yes, and that's a perfect um, statement about the, the evil wolf. And for those of you that want to know more about it, go on my blog and search uh, "good wolf, bad wolf," and there's a, a video of this story. So, um, Josh, I did ask you before we started recording, what would happen if you didn't 
write this uh, letter? What would what would you and your team go through if you if you just let this customer get away with us? Those habits would just continue. I think you know we, he would continue to expect exceptions to the rule, and and all the people in our company would continue to be uh, affected by by the mistakes that that happen when we when we interrupt the process. Um, yes. And and that's not fair to to our workers or our all the other customers that we have. So what I think is great about that statement is as hard as it is, and this is where teams have to, I, I call this healthy client, uh, I call that unhealthy conflict, what you're having with this client, but you're making it healthy because you're doing something about it. It would be, so you were in breakout rooms uh, and I need to let you know you were feeding a good wolf when you were on the beta, beta class, Josh, because you were you have always been um, a positive light in all the courses that you've attended uh, with me. So you were in breakout rooms and because we used Zoom. So uh, what kind of experience? Did, was that helpful having you uh, meet with other people in the class or eh? Yeah, I think very helpful. It was, it was nice to, even if they were straight, I think especially because some of them were strangers, but I think inside inside of your own company or your own team, it's nice to do some, some breakout rooms and, and have a, a topic to focus on, you know, to have the beta class in the middle of all the, the COVID-19 stress and, and all the worry that we were dealing with at the time. Um, it was really, really uh, helped us to focus in all the static and all the chaos and to be able to sort of bounce a few thoughts off of each other and say, are you dealing with this? Or yes. are you, are you struggling with that? And, and, um, you know, the, I think it's good to, to hear your message and have you present, but it's also nice to, to take those, re, those topics and bounce them off of other folks too. And I'm going to take that as a compliment. In other words, Joyce, it's good. We want to hear from you, but there are times when can we talk? <laughs> and I learned Josh, that when I stop talking and let people um, break out in groups more, the uh, participants find it more enjoyable. So there's going to be, and, and you gave me some good feedback on that, by the way. You people told back me, in still remember the scarves that we handed around during your presentation. <laughs> oh my, and that was how long ago? 10 years. Holy moly. I forgot about that till right now. Oh, that is... You're making this interview just a little bit fun. So my wife it, was a fellow business person back in Bad X, and she remembers that from. <laughs> so if you remember the scarves, hopefully now I've gone a little deeper. Uh, so first of all, how if you could think of a word or a phrase working with me, what would that be? Well, I think I said it earlier. The you know the brings some some uh, focus to the chaos, you know, it helps us to Perfect. settle our thoughts a little bit and, and you know, reorganize around, around some things that maybe we, we can't quite put words to, but, um, but you've got a, an idea of what people might, might struggle with and, and, and help us to focus on finding solutions. Great, and I'm stealing that from you. Focus on chaos. I love that. That's Josh's saying. I'm going to tell you right now, you must well start suing me now because I'm going to start using it. I think it's great. So tell me and tell the people who are watching this, this interview, um, why should they take the class? What would be um, a good reason? I think even the most grounded people can always use some some brush up on how to work through conflicts and, and issues with their relations with each other. Um, you know, the best families go to, go to counseling, honestly, even if they were the best families to begin with, they, mm -hmm. they get some, some coaching and some direction and, and, and some, uh, some focus in the chaos. And, <laughs> and, and it's always nice to have a, an outside opinion. Uh um, thank you for such loyalty. Um, I call you one of my advocates because you refer 
you, you, you say yes to everything. I mean, I mean, Josh, I don't know. And I just hope that I hope that you're part of the class again, because I loved having you there. And I want to thank you so much for this interview. Um, it means a lot. And I look forward to working with you again, sir. Yeah, likewise. Thanks.